we're going to take a look, a little closer look at the natural logarithmic function. Okay. Last time we learned about the derivative, and now we're going to kind of look at integration. And so uh, for our first example here, it says find an antiderivative of the function using the power rule for integration. So let's just give this a try, and, and you can do this along with me. We have the integral uh, of 1 over x dx. So if we're going to try to use the power rule, which is over here for you again, we need to change this to um, 1 over x into x to the negative 1. Okay. So we know that's the same thing. And if we're going to use the power rule, just recall that we want to add 1 to the power and then divide by that raised power as well. So if we're going to find the antiderivative here, we're going to go x to the negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, and then we're going to divide it by that raised power of 0. And we know x to the 0 is 1 over 0. And so what do we have there? Yeah, an undefined. Okay. So using the power rule fails at finding the an antiderivative of 1 over x. Okay, because we end up with something that is undefined. Now anytime in math when we come up against something that is undefined or doesn't work, we simply create new math and say, hey, we're going to create something new because we know that the uh, antiderivative must exist because we can see it. We can see that the integral is there. However, um, we don't have the means to express this. And so we need another class of functions to describe this integral enter the natural logarithmic function. Yes? It is. Okay. And so here we get the actual definition of the natural logarithmic function. Uh, you can see uh, there's one over there. Okay. So, um, and this should not come as a surprise because last time, remember what we found was the derivative of ln of x equals 1 over x. Remember that? And we know that the antiderivative is exactly what it says, the antiderivative. So the integral is undoing the differentiation. So we could see here that if we wanted to undo 1 over x, we would get ln x. So now we have the actual definition of natural log, and it's the uh, definite integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, where x is greater than 0. Okay, uh, Because it doesn't work, the natural log function uh, never goes to this side. And um, yeah, we'll take a look more as, as we look at the graph in just a second. Oh, so one other thing about the power rule here. This is what we defined it as, but we're going to add this little stipulation that n cannot equal negative 1. <laughs> and so the power rule does not work when n equals negative 1. So what we're going to use uh, do now is take a look at the properties of integration and the definition of natural log to determine where the natural log function is positive, negative, and 0. So here is your uh, 1 over x function. And so if we look at uh, the natural log function with its definition as being the integral, remember the integral finds the area under the curve. So if we're going to go from 1 to something that is between 0 and 1, I just put that line in. So we know it exists right there. And whatever this is ends up being the natural log. Okay, so the area under the curve 1 over x is the natural log. Yes. So if we were to look at this, yes. Sure. All right. 
I'm also recording this, so it'll be online. Distractions and everything. Gotta love it. Okay, so let's rewrite this. Let's just choose something like um, 0.5. And let's see what happens to the definition here. So the natural log of 0.5 is really what we're looking at. I just picked it because it was between 0 and 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and write it out using its definition. So we know it's from 1 to 0.5 of 1 over x dx. Okay, nope, look at the definition. It goes from 1 to x. So what you're thinking is we usually don't see the limits of integration written like this, right? We usually see the smaller one on the bottom. So what property of integration allows us to switch that? If I were to rewrite it this way, it has to be negative. Okay. So what do you think the natural log of any number between 0 and 1 is going to be? It's going to be a negative number. How about the natural log of 1? I think we learned about it last time using the properties. Um, well, it's a positive area, but the integral is negative because we're going from 1 backwards to negative 5. Okay. So natural log of 1, we learned was what last time? 0. Now we're going to prove that using our properties of integration. So let's use the definition of natural log. So this would be from 1 to x, which is 1. What do we know about integrating where the limits of integration are equal? Yeah, if we go from 1 to 1, we're not getting any area, so it has to equal 0. <laughs> yes, they find the area under the curve of 1 over x. That's what natural log function is doing. Okay, And, and there's no other function... You know, there's no algebraic function that can do that. So we created natural log to do it. So natural, natural log is literally just for that one, just one function? Mm -hmm. It's very similar to, you've got to think way back, way back in the day. And, and if we did a problem like this, something this simple, 4 minus 5, what is that? Negative 1. Does a negative something really exist? Right. If you think about counting sheep, right? <laughs> if you have four sheep and you subtract five sheep, can that negative sheep really exist? No, so we created negative numbers. If you think about it, right? And so the same thing happens when we got uh, the square root of negative 1. So think about the square root of negative 1. So we know a square root means what times itself equals that number. So what times what equals negative 1? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing that really exists. So let's create something. Okay. So, so math, we're, we're creating this stuff to kind of describe our world because we know it does exist somewhere, some, somehow. And so that's the same thing with natural log. So how about natural log uh, greater than 1? It's going to be positive. And you can see that very simply. Let's If we just go to 2, okay. Okay. And we can see there's nothing weird about this. And we are going to get a positive number right there. Okay, so if we come and and look at uh, let's let's look at the next one, next example now. It says use the first and second derivative of the natural log function to describe the graph of the natural log function. So f of x equals ln x. 
So now we're going back to what we did yesterday. What is the derivative of natural log? Yeah, derivative of u over u. So if we're just looking f prime of x, it's just 1 over x. Notice, notice we could also do this this way now. We can prove this using the definition of natural log. Oh, dt. We changed the variable. Um, so that it could be any other function. It could be u, du. So if we look at it this way, if we take the, the derivative of the integral, what are we left with? Just the function, right? Isn't that? Yeah, that's a dt right there. Just dt. I had written dx, but. Okay. So a second fundamental theorem of calculus, derivative of the integral of a function is just the function. Okay, so we just proved it using its definition. Now what's the second derivative of this? Negative. Hold on just a second. So yeah, we just take the derivative of 1 over x, which remember this is x to the negative 1. We pull the negative 1 down, and then we subtract 1, so it's really negative 2. So it goes underneath, so we have negative 1 over x squared. Now what do these derivative and second derivative tell us about our function? Good. So if it's positive, the function is, if the first derivative is positive, That just means that the function is increasing. And because this is the derivative of every point, we know that this function is always going to be increasing. Okay, because notice our stipulation is that x has to be greater than 0. So if x is greater than 0, this function is always increasing as we go there. And then right here, if the second derivative is negative, then it's concave down. And so now we have uh, lots of pieces to be able to graph this function. Okay, So we knew that from 0 to 1 that the function was negative, and we knew at 1 the function was 0, and we knew greater than 1 the function is positive. So we can see all of this happening here. And we also know that the function is increasing over the entire interval, which it is. And then we also know that it's concave down. Okay, so there we have it. Oh, so if the first derivative is positive, then we have um, an increasing function. Sorry, <laughs> that was bad. Bad notation there. All right. So that was just a little bit of information on, you know, the natural log graph and why it is the way it is. Okay. Now, the number e. There's some interesting stuff here. So recall here some stuff about logs. So log base b of x equals y. Okay. What does that mean if we say this normally, it really means b to the y power equals x. Is that review? Therefore, what would be the log base b of b? What does that equal? Just equals 1. Hmm. 
because b to the 1 equals b. So log base b of b is 1. Now let's apply this to this. It turns out that log base e of x equals the natural log of x. Okay. So if we were to come down here for the definition of e, we have the natural log of e equals, and what it is, it's the integral from 1 to the number e of 1 over t dt, and what is this going to equal? Well, let's come back over here. So log base b of b is 1. Log base e of x is ln of x. So ln of e is log base e of e. Which is 1. Did everybody get that? So if we write the ln of e, we're really writing log base e of e. Well, what does log base b of b equal? 1. So e to the what power equals e? E to, the, e to the first power equals e. So what does log base e of e equal? 1. So what does natural log of e equal? 1. Okay. Well, let's think about what that means in terms of the, the definition of log now, definition of natural log. Doesn't that equal the integral from 1 to e of 1 over t? Yeah. So if we come over here and we look at this, what the number e equals, it's that x value such that the area under the curve of 1 over x equals 1. Area, square unit. Is that weird? Okay, so the number e is 2.718, so on and so forth, all right? And you guys have dealt with e, and it has to do with exponential stuff. But really what it's telling us, it's the limit from 1 to e gives us the area under the curve 1 over x equals 1. And that's the only number that does that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't understand how that equals e. Why, why wouldn't it equal 1 over e? Like the, over that? Right here? Yeah. So this is the integral from 1 to e yeah. of 1 over t dt. And that's just the definition of natural log. Are you okay with that? So natural log of x, you can see it's the integral from 1 to x. Uh -huh. So if we're doing the natural log of e, it's the integral from 1 to e. Is that okay? And we, we just used here our log rules to show that this is going to equal 1. So we don't actually need that to solve it? Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's just showing us that it really is the area under the curve from 1 to e equals 1. Okay. To make that relationship in our brains. Because you've probably heard e and you've probably seen it thrown out there, but you didn't understand what it meant. Now you understand what it means because you understand calculus. Okay. So we'll do a couple of quick examples here. Natural log of e to the 0. Mm, really? It's 0. Okay. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Ln of 1 is 0. Another way you can think about it is move that 0 to the front. Zero times anything is zero. Okay, how about natural log of e to the first power? Is one. How about natural log of e to the second power? Two. So on and so forth. So you can take whatever that is and get that. Now, to find anything natural log that doesn't exist in the world of e or factors of e, okay, it becomes a little more difficult. What's that? Is two the x? So two is the x value. Okay. And for that, you just have to turn to your calculator. I'm talking area. I mean, so you need less than one. 
It would be less than one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we got ln button. You guys know where that is? Natural log of two, point six nine three. Mm, yeah. Fundamental theorem of calculus. We're not going to worry about it right now. <laughs> yep. Natural log of 32, 3.466. Natural log of 0.1 gives us negative. Try natural log of zero, and it's not in the domain. 